Today, I want to talk about how the shorts are now trying to stop the real AMC share count in the courts. They're now trying to beg the judge not to allow the lawsuit to get sidetracked into exposing synthetic shares, which is obviously exactly what we need to do to expose the shorts. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So, Frank tweeted saying it sounds like they're scared of a share count. Scared? No beyond terrified. It sounds like the hedgies of the shorts are scared of discovery and legal exploration of synthetic shorting and market manipulation. He said it's amazing how these plaintiffs, aka Allegheny, supposedly represent shareholders and know exactly what's going on with AMC, but believe there's only a minority of shareholders that believe in synthetic shares. They wrote into the court saying fast forward to today. AMC remains a meme stock with a large retail investor base with distinct and vocal minority groups that have varying views and goals. Submissions to the court exhibit a range of favoured causes, often focused on the spectre of naked short selling and covert synthetic shares supposedly used to bail out short positions and prevent a squeeze. Allegheny is saying these concerns are well beyond the claims at issue in this action and have nothing to do with the proposed settlement or the court's consideration of its approval. It says the plaintiffs, aka Allegheny, do not doubt that others believe these issues are important. However, the court should not allow a minority group of putative objectors to raise serial issues designed to turn this case into something it is not an opportunity to explore broad theorized market manipulation or force a share count in service of uncovering synthetic shares. Basically, Ali Jenny is saying in this latest filing that the courts should not investigate synthetic shares and should not hold a real AMC share count. So it sounds like Ali Jenny clearly do not believe in synthetic shorts and are therefore likely working for the shorts. Now we've known for some time that Allegheny are either paid off or just simply trying to delay this lawsuit to try and ensure the price of AMC falls even further. But I think this clearly caps off exactly which side they're working for if they don't believe in synthetic shares, they don't believe synthetics are an issue, and don't believe the courts should hold a real AMC share count. And this is why we should write in to show that we're not a minority group of shareholders that believe in synthetic shares. Actually, it's the entire of the retail investor base that believes in these synthetics. I think really this reinforces my confidence even more that we need to expose these synthetic shares in court because that's exactly what the shorts are scared of. Or as Frank says, not scared, but beyond terrified. Now, especially as Simulation Ape Nation has tweeted saying that he's held AMC for over two plus years with two different brokerage firms. And he says, but he didn't receive not even one AMC postcard. He said, I already knew my shares were fake and this just gives him more confirmation. He said, as long as I can sell the shares, I don't care if my shares are real or synthetic because obviously both shares pay the same at the end. I see a lot of people in my comments wondering or worried if their shares are real or synthetic, but what I'm telling you is that it doesn't matter. If anything, having synthetic shares is actually better as those are the shares that need to be bought back. Obviously, if you have real shares, it doesn't matter because you can still sell those during a squeeze, but it's obviously all of those illegal synthetics that actually need to be bought back and cancelled. When all of the synthetics have been bought back and closed out of, that will mark the end of the squeeze. But obviously you're more than welcome and can definitely sell real shares during that squeeze period as well. Guys, be sure to sign up to Moomoo, the sponsor of today's video, by using the link in the description below. You can currently get up to 15 free shares, which on its own is worth tons and tons of money. The platform's also very easy to use. It's incredibly clear and concise, and they also have entirely commission-free trading. And for a short time period, you can also get one free guaranteed share of Tesla or Google, which you could always use to buy more AMC shares if you wanted. And it seems that IVKR or interactive brokers are up to their same tricks again, banning users from buying Bed Bath & Beyond shares. This user bought over 100,000 shares of Bed Bath & Beyond, and as a result, IBKR has therefore restricted you from further purchases in Bed Bath & Beyond. They said if you wish to trade this security and would like to have this trading restriction on this security temporarily removed, please respond to this customer service ticket with your reasoning. 
Right now, if you buy a lot of Bed Bath & Beyond shares, IBKR actually removed the ability for you to sell or buy more shares because they think for some reason that you're an affiliate. This user bought over 1.2 million shares of Bed Bath & Beyond and is therefore unable to buy any more. Now, I also wanted to quickly touch on Paul T and how he spoke about AMC and GameStop the other day and said he believes there's no reason AMC and GameStop investors can't unite on common ground. Again, this is something that I've always believed in, that AMC and GameStop apes should not be fighting each other, but working together for the same thing. Now, I did see some people saying that Porty was advertising DRS in that space is cool and other things to do with GameStop, but I don't think it really matters because he was mainly speaking on AMC. And the Vega chef Andrew has effectively said that any publicity is good publicity. He said, I think it's amazing to have Porty even mention AMC. As you can see, Porty has over 3.2 million followers. And he said, fact, just Porty alone won't move the stock. But if there's more positive sentiment surrounding particular stocks, it will. I completely agree that any publicity is good publicity, whether he's talking about DRS in the space is cool or not. It's still going out to over 3 million followers. And the call had over 10,000 consecutive listeners all at once. Now, I just wanted to show you a quick extract from this Spaces call where Biggums effectively summarized the two to three hour video, summarizing the last two to three years of AMC and GameStop investing into a four minute cliff note. Now, obviously, I don't want to play this entire four minute video, but I will link it down in the description below so you can listen to it for yourself. But I just wanted to show you some quick important extracts. A lot of people want me to come in here and talk about what's going on with the movement and what I, I believe it stands for. And, you know, we find out as retail for the last, you know, ever, the entire system's against you. You have market makers with rule exemption 203B, and they can fill shares without locating. So right now you have, you know, Citadel going on Twitter bragging about how they do $15 billion a year worth of stocks, which is technically them selling us synthetics or them selling us what we should be calling market maker exemptions so the entire time you sit there and you find out the media is against you you got kramer you got all of these regulators that are supposed to be protecting retail protecting all of us instead they're sitting there helping them they have a thing called an acceptance waiver and consent except waiver consent allows crime they're allowed to do it never admit guilt and they just pay a small fine and just keep going you have people like jamie damon and, and jp morgan with 236 violations which are all felony crimes, but they're able to continuously trade in the market. You have uh, your government who's supposed to be helping you, politicians who are sitting there going to these guys' Citadel's office. Janet Yellen makes more money a year doing speaking fees for Citadel than she does at her own government job. And this is the problem. You have everybody involved in this 1% club against everybody. And then what do they do just like they do with politics? Everybody, oh, you got GME, you got AMC. We're going to put you guys against each other so you guys don't focus on the real problem, which is us. Um, you know, and now they sit there and they look over and go, hey, you know, retail might be crashing banks now. Now we got to get short selling bans against banks. And that's, this is what it is. It's always, if you guys do the things that we do to you, to us, then we need laws, then we need regulations, then we need rules in place just so you guys stop it because the entire system is a joke at this point. Everyone is over leveraged. You have banks out there over leveraged 100, 200 times their position. You have JP Morgan who has a bigger gold position in shorts than their entire assets and nobody cares. They let these guys go. They manipulate the stock through ISDA. They manipulate it through total return swaps. They manipulate it through the OTC market. Although regardless of this corruption, I do think the market will soon be heading back downwards, setting new lows as the next stage of the market crash commences. You may have seen that yesterday, one single institution sold 33 million shares of Apple at the close, valued at over $5.8 billion. Now, obviously, there's only a few institutions out there that have over 33 million shares of Apple to sell, either JP Morgan or BlackRock. Clearly, they do not believe Apple is going any higher in the short term. That's why they've sold their shares close to the top, preparing for the next leg down. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.